السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أنبياء الله جميعا وعلى سيدهم وخاتمهم حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد بن عبد الله وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين والصفوة الخيرة من أصحابه المنتجبين وعلى سيدي ومولاي الإمام أبي عبد الله الحسين وعلى أهل بيته الكرام وأصحابه الميامين أجمعين والسلام عليكم أحبتي في الله جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته وبعد فقد قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تركنوا إلى الذين ظلموا فتمسكم النار وما لكم من دون الله من أولياء ثم لا تنصرون صدق الله العلي العظيم The Holy Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet peace be upon him and his family is riddled with verses that forbids us to work with wrongdoers or to aid them or to assist them or to help them in any way to shun and to avoid helping the wrongdoers the dictators the corrupts stay away from them don't be part of their system وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا فَتَمَسَّكُمُ النَّارِ In Surah Hud, chapter 11, verse 113. وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا Do not incline toward those who are wrongdoers, the wrongdoers, lest the fire is going to touch you. فَتَمَسَّكُمُ النَّارِ وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ Do not help one another over sin and aggression. Don't help. If someone is an aggressor, is corrupt, don't be part of his system. Stay away from that. في الحديث الشريف the hadith من أعانه Let me read the hadith for you in in أصول الكافي volume number 2 page 353 page 353 عن أبي عبد الله عليه السلام قال من أعان على مؤمن بشطر كلمة whosoever helps a tyrant, a dictator, a wrongdoer, a corrupt person to hurt someone else to hurt him even if you help him with half a sentence even if you help him with one word لقي الله عز وجل يوم القيامة مكتوب بين عينيه آية من رحمتي He will meet his Lord on the day of judgment on the day of judgment He will meet his Lord on the day of judgment written on his forehead that he is despondent and despair from God's mercy. And then, the other hadith. The other hadith. إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ عَنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ نَادَ مُنَادٍ أَيْنَ الظَّلَمَةُ وَأَعْوَانَهُمْ A caller would scream, would call where are the wrongdoers and their supporters? Not just the wrongdoers themselves, those who supported them, those who aided them. In any way, helping them, even giving them a piece of paper. مَنْ لَاقَ لَهُمْ دَوَاتًا أَوْ رَبَطَ لَهُمْ كِيسًا أَوْ مَدَّ لَهُمْ مُدَّةَ قَلَمٍ فَحْشُرُوهُمْ مَعَهُمْ Those who aided them in any way, whether this aid is spiritual or physical or material or social or political or economic then he 
he or she is going to face the same destiny. Imam al-Sadiq says, Al-Amilu bil-Zulm wal-Mu'inu lahu wal-Radhi bihi shuraka'u thalathatuhum. The one who practices dhulm, wrongdoing. The one who supports him, mu'in, aids him. And the one who approves, who condone, also are going to have the same fate. So not only the one who practices, but the one who approves him too. Imam al-Sadiq says, لَوْلَا أَنَّ بَنِي أُمَيَّةَ وَجَدُوا مَنْ يَكْتُبْ لَهُمْ If it wasn't that those tyrants, the Umayyad dynasty, they found some people who propagate for them, who promote them, who endorse them. وَيَجْبِي لَهُمُ الْفَيْءِ And bring them the taxes. وَيُقَاتِلُ عَنْهُمْ And defends on their behalf. وَيَشْهَدُ جَمَاعَتَهُمْ and go and witness their gatherings, لَمَا سَلَبُونَ حَقَّنَا They wouldn't have been able to take the right from us, to usurp our rights, but because they found supporters and helpers who aided them, who stood with them, who encouraged them, who sustained them. Listen to this verse, listen to this hadith. في قوله تعالى, Imam al-Sadiq says, وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا in Surah Hud, وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا Do not be inclined towards the wrongdoers. وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا Lest hellfire is going to touch you. He says, هُوَ الرَّجُلُ يَأْتِ السُلْطَانِ A man comes to a tyrant. Sultan here is a reference to a tyrant. A ruler who's tyrant. فَيُحِبُّ بَقَاءَهُ إِلَىٰ أَنْ يُدْخِلَ يَدَهُ إِلَىٰ كِيسِهِ فَيُعْطِيهِ only he wishes that this tyrant stays for five minutes longer until he puts his hand in his pocket and gives him money. So he wishes that he would remain alive. Even this, this amount, this small amount, negligible amount of time that you wish a tyrant to stay in power because you are benefiting from him, this means you are supporting him, wishing him goodness. Now, we have such hadiths, okay? Then, why then we see the history of Islam from after the death of the Prophet, peace be upon him, until now? There is a group of Wa'adu Salatin who work always for the government, employees of the government, promoters, advocates of the Sultan. And not Sultan which is just, not a Sultan which is pious, not a Sultan that helps his people out, but a corrupt Sultan, a bad Sultan. Those people who are flattery with them, they kiss up to them, and there are many of them. Turn to the TV and see. For, watch for yourself. What happens in Mecca and Medina on Fridays during the Eid ceremony. How those Wa'adu Salatin who are appointed by the king, by the sultan, by the emir, in Hijaz, in the Gulf states, in other countries, in North Africa, in most Muslim countries. How they kiss up to the leadership how they always pray for a leader who is corrupt. I wish they pray for a leader who is not corrupt. We all pray for him. But when the leader, political leader, is mired in corruption, is mired in abuse, and is mired in violations of human rights, how do we pray for him? How do we wish him goodness? How do you even mention his name in your prayers? in a sacred place. But they, but they always justified, justified, it was the justification of the religious establishment that made the political establishment strong. Because the religious establishment was always backing, backing and supporting and aiding and encouraging and praying for the political 
establishment. Whereas this book, the Holy Quran says, see, some of the countries, Muslim countries, they brag about their relationship with the enemies of Islam. They brag about it. And they brag because they have been endorsed by their corrupt wa'ad al-salateen, by their corrupt imams and mashayikh. See what chapter 60, Surah Al-Muntahana, Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, la tattakhidu aduwi wa'aduwakum awliya, tulquna ilayhim bil mawadda. Do not take my enemy and your enemy. Don't take them as a friends, intimate friends, loyal friends. Do not collaborate with them. Do not have an alliance with them. Do not even work with them. You extend tulquna ilayhim bil mawadda. You extend love and compassion towards them. This is one verse. The second verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5, verse 51. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tattakhidu al-yahuda wa nasara awliya. Ba'dhuhum awliya u ba'dh. Wa man yatawallahum minkum fa innahu minhum inna Allah la yahdi al-qawm al-zalimin. Those non-Muslims who are enemies of Islam, not friends. If they are friends, we have no problem with them. We can work with any human being. But if that person is against you because you are Muslim, because you are a believer in God, because you are not subservient to Him, because you are not controlled by Him, He turns against you. Because He's about dictatorship. He's about imperialism. He's about monopoly. He's about dominance. They love dominance. They, they want to dominate the whole world. So those people don't take them as protectors, as allies, as guardians. But look what is happening, especially in the Arabian Peninsula and the, some of the Gulf states. How they make alliances with the enemies of Islam at the expense of the Muslims and with the blessings of some of their mashayikh, some of their religious leaders who endorse this. They endorse working with the enemies of Islam is okay, but extending your hand to your brothers and sisters in Islam from different madahib, different sects, different schools of thought, this is forbidden. This is laya Jews. You are not allowed to have unity with the Shia, with the followers of Ahlul Bayt, because they are non-Muslims. But working with the enemies of Islam, terrible enemies of Islam, who are murdering, intimidating, occupying the land of the Muslims, is okay. It's permissible. Do you see how facts and how the truth is being dismantled and destroyed and twisted when the truth, when the truth is twisted? By whom? By religious establishment. By those who are appointee of the sultan, of the king. He is there because he kisses, he kiss up to the sultan. He defends the sultan. He promotes him. And when they attack innocent people in Yemen, innocent women, children, civilian, for almost six years, are under bombardment and attack and embargo. Then they give their blessings. They support the regime. God says in the Quran, ala al-kuffar, bainahum. A Muslim should be tough with the enemies of God, the enemies of humanity. But among them, they have to be merciful and compassionate and forgiving. Now we see the opposite of this verse being practiced in the Arabian Peninsula and elsewhere too, not just that place. So where does this idea of supporting a tyrant comes? If you look at the Quran, Quran says don't support dictators and corrupts and tyrants. This is a crime. And if you do, do, if you do this, you will have the same fate with them. You will be joining them on the Day of ju Judgment. The Hadith says the same. 
I just read hadiths from Al-Kafi and other books. Don't even accept what they say. Don't. Don't put your hand, pull off your hand from their hands. Don't pay allegiance to them. Don't support them. Don't elect them. And don't even accept what they do. You have to refuse. Inside your heart, inside your mind, you have to refuse their existence and their wrongdoing. So where does that come from? I'll give you an example. An example of how, how some scholars, and some of them are called Shaykh al-Islam. Shaykh al-Islam means he's the, the head, the head of the state, the head of the religious state. How they justify, they justify the corruption. They bring hadith, fabricated hadiths. They attribute these fabricated and false hadiths to the noble prophet of Islam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they justify the wrongdoing because they want to tell you that Bani Umayyah and Bani Abbas and other corrupt dynasties and rulers who ruled with the iron fist, they are justified. They are legitimate. They are successors to the Prophet. One of them is Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, Muhammad ibn Abdul Halim in his book, Minhaj al-Sunnah al-Nabawiyyah. This is volume number one died 728 Hijri in Damascus. In page, in page 213, عن النبي صلى الله عليه he says, وسلم, قال, من رأى من أمير, شي, من أميره شيئا يكرهه فليصبر عليه فإنه ليس أحد من الناس يخرج عن السلطان شبرا فمات عليه إلا مات ميتة جاهلية. If you see from your leader, political leader, something bad, terrible, you have to be patient. Do nothing about it. Because if you break away, then you're going to die as a non-Muslim. You're going to die as those who died before Islam, the pre-Islamic era, Mitat and Jahiliya. He says some, someone comes to the Prophet and then the Prophet is going to tell him, listen, this is in page 214. This is Minhaj al-Sunnah, Ibn Taymiyyah, the greatest scholar in Saudi Arabia, in Wahhabism, in Salafism. This is the Prophet of Salafism and Wahhabism. The most sacred man in Wahhabism is Ibn Taymiyyah, the most sacred man. All their knowledge is taken from this man, Ibn Taymiyyah. He says in page 214, volume number 2, he, pay, he says, he attributes this false hadith to the Prophet. After me, there will be leaders. They are not going to be guided with my guidance. They don't follow my sunnah. Which is it true? This part of it is it true. Bani Umayyah and Bani Al-Abbas, they neither had the guidance of the Prophet nor they practiced his sunnah. This is it true. But later on, see. وَسَيَقُومُ فِيهِمْ رِجَالٌ قُلُوبُهُمْ قُلُوبُ الشَّيَاطِينَ فِي جُثْمَانِ الْإِنسِ قُلْتْ كَيْفَ أَصْنَعُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ There will be among them men who are, they have, they possess the hearts of Satan's while they are in the shape of a humans. So the man is asking the Prophet, then what should we do to them if we happen to encounter them? فَإِنْ أَدْرَكْتُ ذَلِكْ كَيْفَ أَصْنَعُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ إِنْ أَدْرَكْتُ ذَلِكْ قَالْ تَسْمَعُ this is the false part of it. This is which, which is not consistent with the Prophet's manners and the Prophet's message, the message of Islam. قال تسمع وتطيع للأمير وإن ضرب ظهرك وأخذ مالك فاسمع وأطع. You must listen to that corrupt tyrant even if he punishes you, strikes your back, even if he usurps your wealth, Listen and obey. Another hadith, page 215. عن النبي, he says, عن النبي, He's not. Definitely this is not a prophetic hadith. 
definitely this is a fabrication of Bani Umayyah who are the masters of this man, Ibn Taymiyyah. قَالَ مَنْ وَلَّى عَلَيْهِ وَالٍ فَرَآهُ يَأْتِي شَيْئًا مِنْ مَعْصِيَةِ اللَّهِ فَلْيَنْكُرْ مَا يَأْتِي مِنْ مَعْصِيَةِ اللَّهِ وَلَا يَنْزَعَنَّ يَدًا مِنْ طَاعَتِهِ If a man becomes your wali, your guardian, your chief, your leader, your president, your prime minister, your king, and you see him committing mischief, committing wrongdoing, committing disobedience, an act of disobedience, do not take your hand out of his hand. Keep your hand in his hand. Means keep supporting him and following him and appraising him. Is this the Prophet really? The Prophet who came first and foremost to defeat injustice. لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُولَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانِ لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْطِ We sent all these scriptures, all the scriptures, all the prophets, all these books for one reason. People stand up for justice and fight corruption, fight injustice, fight the wrong and wrongdoings. And the Prophet comes and says, if you find a leader in your community, in your country, who's corrupt, who's mired in corruption and injustice, then still pay respect to him, pay allegiance to him, stay with him, support him. This is in Minhaj al-Sunnah. Where did he bring these hadiths? Unfortunately, he's bringing these hadiths from these books, books that are called authentic. Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Tarmadi, Nisa'i, Ibn Majah. Okay. Abu Dawood. Let's go to Sahih Muslim as an example. This is one example. I have many, many. I have many, but I'm just giving you one or two examples. This is Sahih Muslim. The book that I have is Al-Imara. Chapter on Al-Imara. Okay, hadith number 4785. The same hadith that I read earlier. He took it from Muslim. قال تسمع وتطيع للأمير وإن ضرب ظهرك وأخذ مالك فاسمع وأطع. You must listen to this dictator. Even if this dictator is against you, he punishes you, he abuses you. Say yes, sir, to him. Yes, sir, Habibi. سمع وطاع. You are my leader because my prophet said I have to be submissive, subordinate, subservient to the tyrant. Because my religion condones tyranny and dictatorship. The religion of the Shaykhain condones tyranny. Another hadith 4791. An Ibn Abbas an Rasulullah. Fabricated hadith. You can tell. Doesn't require a lot of intelligence to distinguish between truth and falsehood. Believe me does not require a lot of intelligence, some intelligence, because it's very obvious, very obvious. مَنْ كَرِهَ مِنْ أَمِيرِهِ شَيْئًا فَلْيَصْبِرْ عَلَيْهِ فَإِنَّهُ لَيْسَ أَحَدٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ يَخْرُجُ مِنَ السُّلْطَانِ شِبْرًا فَمَاتَ عَلَيْهِ إِلَّا مَاتَ مِيتَةً جَاهِلِيَةً Okay? Same, same thing that I mentioned earlier. That if, you see something bad from your sultan, your leader, and you don't like it, something illegal, illegitimate, against your book, against your religion, فَلْيَصْبِرْ Be patient. Don't break out. Don't break away from the group. If you break away, you're going to die the death of ignorance a non-Islamic death. You leave this life while you are not Muslim because you broke away. You seceded and broke away from this corrupt group. 
But he himself, ironically, when you come to Ibn Taymiyyah, he himself contradicts himself. He says something in page 214 and something else in page 215. Why? Because, because this is a pathetic liar. And the hadith says, لا حافظة لكذوب. A liar does not have good memory. A liar is, sits with you. He lies now. Two minutes later, he contradicts himself 180 degrees because he's a liar. How do we know that this man is a liar? Because of the contradiction in his book. Look at the contradiction. Earlier he said, he said, even, even if the wali or the sultan is corrupt, listen to him, obey him. Don't break away from him. Listen to him. But then in page 215, he mentions a story and attribute the story to Imam Ali alayhi salam. كما في الصحيح عن علي رضي الله عنه قال بعث رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم سرية واستعمل عليها رجلا من الأنصار وأمرهم أن يسمعوا له ويطيعوا فأغضبوه في شيء فقال اجمعوا لي حطبا فجمعوا ثم قال أوقدوا نارا فأوقدوا ثم قال ألم يأمركم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أن تسمعوا إلي وتطيعوا قالوا بلى قال فادخلوها فنظر بعضهم إلى بعض فقالوا إنما فررنا إلى رسول الله من النار The Prophet sent an expedition and he made appointed a leader from the Ansar over them and he said to them listen to this man he's your leader so halfway through something happened a disagreement they didn't listen to him he got angry he said, you have to let a fire. So they let a fire. He said to them, go into the fire. They looked at each other and they said, we are not going to do this because we, from fire we run away. How do you ask us to go to, to the fire? This is something crazy you are asking us and we are not going to listen to you. He said to them, When he cooled down, They mentioned the story to the Prophet on their return. فقال صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم لو دخلوها ما خرجوا منها إنما الطاعة في المعروف They did good that they did not go into the fire. If they had been into the fire, they would have been there forever. I ask them to listen to him when he says something good, not when he says something bad. When he says something bad, he's a dictator. You should not listen to him. So see how Ibn Taymiyyah contradicts himself? In one page, he says, listen to him whatsoever, whatever he says to you, listen. Because he's your emir, your leader. Because the mafsada, the corruption that comes out of being disunited is bigger than the mischief of this emir. But here he comes in the following page, he contradicts himself. And then he says something and I'm going to ask him. Ask Ibn Taymiyyah. Another hadith, Man atakum wa amrukum ala rajulin wahid. If someone comes to you while your emir is one, you have chosen one, okay? Yuridu an yashukka asakum aw yufarriqa jama'atakum faqtuluh. If that person comes and he wants to divide you, then murder him. I will ask him this question. Wherever he is, God knows in what layer he is there in his abode. I'm go going to ask him, wasn't Imam Ali the fourth caliph according to you? Didn't the Ummah choose Imam Ali as a leader, universal leader, universal caliph and successor and they paid allegiance to him? Then why Talha, Zubair, Umm al muminin Aisha, they revolted against him. يَشُقُّ عَصَى جَمَاعَتَكُمْ أَوْ يُفَرِّقْ يَشُقُّ عَصَاكُمْ أَوْ يُفَرِّقَ جَمَاعَتَكُمْ Why they came to divide the Ummah? What will say about them? What would you say about them? I leave the answer for your intelligence. Because Islam is the religion where we have to use our minds, not our emotions, our minds. Where would they go? Those who fought against Imam Ali in the Battle of Jamal. Those who fought against Imam Ali in the Battle of Safin, Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan and his cronies. Where would they go? 
Because you are telling me that if we had a unified leader and someone breaks up and wants to destroy the unity, then you must murder him. Shouldn't we, according to this hadith, murder the opponents of Imam Ali in the battle of the camel and in the battle of Safin, according to you? So my friends, and let me conclude with something he says in page 209. Look at what he says in page. This is Ibn Taymiyyah. He says, ستون سنة مع إمام جائر خير من ليلة واحدة بلا إمام To spend 60 years with a corrupt and unjust Imam is better than spending one night without an Imam. This is how they justify tyranny, dictatorship, totalitarianism in Islam. People like him, scholars like him, throughout the history of mankind. Do you know why we have dictatorship in Islam now? Do you know why our leadership, the leadership of the Muslim Ummah in Arabia and elsewhere is corrupt? Because of such hadiths. Because of such Wa'ad al-Salateen who promote tyranny and dictatorship and corruption. Who praise them, who support them, who endorse them. And God says in his book, وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا فَتَمَسَّكُمُ النَّارِ Al-Abbas ibn Ali is a leader who chose to stand with the truth. They gave him amnesty. On the day of Ashura, he was given amnesty. He said, Aman Allah khayrun min aman ibn Ziyad. The amnesty that God has given me is better than the amnesty of Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. I'm going to stand with my brother Hussein, with the truth, defending my religion, even if, even if that cost my blood. And then he sent his three brothers before him to the battlefield, Abdullah, Ja'far, Uthman, and he was number four. His mother, Umm al banin Fatima al-Kilabiya, Fatima bint Hizam, lost four. But in fact, she did not lose. She gained. She gained because this is martyrdom. She gained dignity. She gained honor. She gained salvation. And she gained the shafa'ah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Salamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah wa ala al-arwah allati hallat bi fina'ika wa anakhat bi rahlik. Alaykum minni jami'an salamu allahi abadan ma baqeet. Wa baqiya al-layl wa al-nahar. ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين